Hello everyone, in this video I will be showing you on how we would use our Mohr circle for us to determine the moment of inertia of a certain object about any axis given. So from the previous pre-recorded lectures, I already have shown you on how you would be solving the moment of inertia about the x and y axis using the transfer formula and how to solve for the product of inertia respectively. Okay, so suppose that we have this section right here wherein we have already solved for the moment of inertia about the x-axis, the moment of inertia about the y-axis, and let's say the product of inertia, Pxy. And Pxy is basically equal to Ixy, so it would just depend on the book that you are reading whether your product of inertia is Pxy or Ixy. So this is just a matter of nomenclature. Okay, so suppose that our product of inertia is Pxy, so we have this one already. So once again, we already have this value right here, Ix and Iy. And let's say that you want to determine or you are required to solve for the moment of inertia about an axis different from these two. Then let's say that that axis is to be this axis right here. So let's say that this is to be the U axis. So for U to solve for the moment of inertia about the u axis we would be making use of our more circle so this is where more circle would come in handy what you need is the value of your product of inertia your moments of inertia and this angle right here or this angle right here so depending on, upon the given as long as you know this location of your u axis right here another case where the more circle is useful is in this section right here so when we have solved for the product of inertia you're already familiar with this section right here so once again i would be drawing its x and y axis so okay so given this axis right here we can solve for the moment of inertia about the x axis and the moment of inertia about the y axis using transfer formula and once again, from the previous pre-recorded lecture, we have already solved for the product of inertia Pxy. Okay, so what is the issue here? Take note, guys, that this moments of inertia right here, Ix and Iy, though even though that your Ix is greater than that of your Iy, neither of these moments of inertia is to be the maximum moment of inertia of this section right here. So imagine that if you would be are rotating this section right here by this much so let's say that the, in this one right here it is in this axis right here where you can get the maximum moment of inertia of this particular section so if i am to uh, put it back to its original um, geometry which is this one right here so once again the maximum moment of inertia of this certain section right here spoiler alert is to be along this direction right here so it would be this and if i am to draw a perpendicular line about this axis right here it would be this one right here so there and the moment of in i mean the maximum moment of inertia of this section is to be th in this axis right here so, and let's say that this is to be the your v axis and this is to be your u axis your iv is to be your minimum inertia and your iu so your iu is to be your maximum inertia so this one right here is to be your minimum and this one is to be your maximum so that is for our spoiler alert so we can use more circle for us to determine this two right here if you are i mean if you are required to solve for it but first let's give credit to where it is due so Mohr circle is developed by German engineer Otto Mohr in 1882. So the usage of Mohr circle is actually for about a century and 40 years already. So as per the definition here, Mohr circle is a graphical representation of the transformation equation for moments and products of inertia. And your Mohr circle typically looks like this, where um, your product of inertia is to be in your ordinate and your moments of inertia is to be your uh, abscissa or your x-axis respectively. So how can we use our more circle? I mean, how can we plot our more circle? So it would be like this. So once again, you are given the moment of inertia about the x-axis, 
the moment of inertia about your y-axis and your product of inertia pxy or ixy so it would depend upon uh, which nomenclature would you like so okay so with those i would now be uh, drawing my plane so i mean my cartesian plane so it, this is to be our cartesian plane so once again in this ordinate right here on or in the y-axis you would be plotting your product of inertia and in your abscissa you would be plotting your moment of inertia i so it would be ix and iy and here for your coordinates you would be plotting ix and pxy then your iy and the negative of your pxy so it would be that one so for this coordinate right here, so suppose that you have your moment of inertia about the x-axis to be in this point right here. And your uh, product of inertia is in to be this part right here. So, so it would be exactly on this one right here. So here. And after that, let's plot this coordinate right here. So let's say that the moment of inertia about your y-axis is to be in this part right here. And the negative, um, the negative value of your product of inertia is in to be this part right here. So getting their intersection, it would be up on this part right here. So it would be exactly on this point. So once again, this is to be your ix, pxy, and this is to be your iy, negative pxy. So what you would be doing next is that you would be connecting these two points right here. So here it would be this one right here. So it may not be um, as perfect as it looks like but it would be looking like that. So anyway, if that is to be the case, this this line right here is to be the diameter of your circle. So with, with this one as your center. So I would just be highlighting it with a different color. This one is to be your center. This one is to be the diameter of your um, circle. And this one is to be, so this is to be your radius and your radius. So from that, you would now be drawing a circle using this. And to save my uh, dignity, I wouldn't be drawing the circle here because I might fail big time. So I would just be showing this circle right here. So suppose that I would be drawing my circle here, it would look like this one right here. So once again, your ixy or your pxy. So once again, your ixy and your pxy is basically the same. So if you would be plotting your ixy and your positive ix, it would be this point right here. And for your negative pxy or negative ixy and your iy, it would be this point right here. And if you would be tracing them, I mean, if you would be connecting both of them, that is to be the diameter of your circle with this point right here as your center. So using your compass, you would be drawing this circle right here. And how can we use this circle right here for us to determine the different moments of inertia of that section? So I would be showing that to you later. So once again, this is what it would look like if you would be plotting it and this is to be the parts of your Mohr circle. So this point right here, since your abscissa is to be the moment of inertia, this point right here is to be the minimum moment of inertia. Since this would, I mean this point would give you the lowest value. And this one right here is to be your maximum moment of inertia because that would give you the highest value of inertia. And this one right here is to be the uh, moment of inertia that is averaged between the two. So meaning that is to be the center of your uh, Mohr circle. And this is to be the radius. And for you to get the radius, that is basically this point right here minus C or C minus B. So they should be equal. And another thing that is not included in this drawing right here is to be this angle right here. Take note on this, guys. This angle right here is 2 theta. So don't forget that and I will be showing you later what is the significance of this 2 theta right here. So okay, so let's just have an example here. So suppose that we have this particular section right here. So it would be having a base of 6 inches and it would be having a height of 10 inches. 
Okay, so let's say that in this particular problem right here, we are required to determine the moment of inertia about a certain axis. Let's say that this is to be the axis. And let's say that we would be having a certain angle of, so let's say that our angle is to be um, 35 degrees. So 35 degrees from your x-axis, you would want to know this, I mean, the moment of inertia about this. So let's say that this is to be a u-axis. So we would be determining i u okay and once again from this um from this one right here we are to solve for the moment of inertia of x axis y axis and the product of inertia okay so for your i x this is to be equal to so using the formula from the previous pre-recorded lecture that is to be b h cube over 12 so this is to be 6 times 10 cube divided by 12 and this is to be equal to looking at the calculator to your left that is to be 6 times 10 cube divided by 12 so that is to be 500 inches to the fourth power so this is to be for your ix and as for your iy which is the moment of inertia about the y-axis that is to be h b cube over 12 so if you are um, getting confused in this formulas right here you better watch our previous pre-recorded lecture first about moment of inertia okay so with this our inertia is to be um, h b so our h is to be 10 our b is to be 6 so times 6 times 6 times 6 divided by 12 so our answer here is equal to 180 inches raised to 4 so this is to be our ix and our iy respectively. So at what else do we need? We also need the value for our pxy. But in our previous pre-recorded lecture, once again about product of inertia, if your section is to be symmetrical, your product of inertia is automatically equal to zero. So if you don't believe me, you can solve for it first. So there. And I would just be deleting these solutions right here and I would just leave the values. So our ix is equal to 500. Our iy is equal to 180. So inches raised to fourth, inches raised to fourth. And our pxy is equal to zero inches raised to fourth. Okay, so we would now be drawing our more circles. So it would be this one right here. So here so first thing ix pxy so for your ix pxy that is to be 500 and 0 so 500 so this is to be 500 and 0 so it would be this one right here and after that you you must now plot iy negative pxy so iy and negative pxy is equal to 180 and 0 so it would be let's say this part right here so 180 0 okay so with these values right here so we already have this 500 and 0 right here and 180 0 right here we would now be drawing a circle with i mean with this as its diameter so it would be this one right here and once again to preserve my dignity i wouldn't be drawing this circle right here since i would mess up so i have now drawn this using autocad so using this coordinates right here which is 500 zero so this is to be your 500 zero and this is to be your 180 zero you must now determine this center point right here so for us to determine the radius okay so this center point right here can be solved using this equation right here so if you can see here this length right here is equal to 180 so that is to be 180 and this one right here is to be equal to half of this length right here so one half of this whole length right here and this whole length right here is equal to 500 minus 180 so 500 minus 180 so from that you can now determine this 
location right here. So that is one way for you to determine this center point right here. So another thing which is more simple, it would just be the average of 180 and 500. So it would be as simple as that. So let's just use that formula instead. So once again, 180, 0. And for this point right here, that is to be the average of 500 and 180. So 500 plus 180 divided by 2, that is to be equal to so 500 plus 180 divided by 2 that is to be 340 so this point right here is to be 340 0 so from that our radius right here is equal to so 500 minus 340 so that is to be 160 so this is 160 and to prove this should also be equal to 160 so 340 minus 180 so 340 minus 180 that is also equal to 160 so confirm you have this radius right here which is 160 so i would just be er erasing this i would just be taking note here that our radius is equal to 160 so inches raised to fourth so I, I would just be labeling this this is to be your pxy and this one right here is to be your i or ix or iy and whatsoever so this is to be your ix and this is to be your iy so for us to determine the value of our iu using this angle right here we would now be plotting two theta here so if this is to be 35 degrees and from the center point, which is in this location right here, I would now be uh, drawing this axis right here, or our u-axis. And this is to be our u-axis, where this theta, I mean this angle right here is equal to 2 theta. And if this one right here is to be 35 degrees, this is to be 2 times 35 degrees, which is 70 degrees. So 2 theta. So I would just be erasing this. And this is to be 70 degrees. So from that, we can now, oh, by the way, I would just be moving this to the other side since we are to use this area right here. Our 2 theta is now equal to 70 degrees. So from that, since we already know our radius and our radius earlier is equal to 160 inches raised to fourth. So this length right here is 160 inches raised to fourth. And if you want to determine the moment of inertia about this axis right here, we would now be projecting this one downwards. So let's project this one downwards. And whatever this value is, is to be your IU. So from that, we would be making use of our trigonometric functions. So in this triangle right here, so I would just be clearing this up once again. So once again, this one is to be 340. And this radius right here is to be 160 inches raised to fourth. And this angle right here is to be um, 70 degrees. So I have just rewritten it. So what we would be doing is that we would be getting this dimension right here. And since this is to be adjacent to our hypotenuse, we would now be using our cosine function. So cosine theta. So I would just be writing it here at the top right. So cosine theta is equal to adjacent so adjacent which is this and let's say that this is to be our value u for example so u over hypotenuse so over hypotenuse and in this case our hypotenuse is equal to 160 so 160 and our theta is to be 70 degrees so from that cosine 70 is equal to u over 160 and solving for our value of u, cross multiplying for us to isolate u on the on just one side, that is to be u is equal to 160 cosine 70. And from that, our u is now equal to so 160 cosine 70, and that is equal to 54.72 um, inches raised to fourth. But is this our answer? So not yet. Our answer for this, I mean, for the moment of inertia of this axis right here should be 
the value of this point right here. So what we have solved for here is just this value right here. But what we are actually solving for here is to be this whole length right here. So it would start from the origin up until here at this point right here. So from that, we can just solve for it by. So I would just be writing it here at the bottom part. So for your i u, that is equal to this point right here. So this point right here, which is 340. So 340 plus our value here of u, which is 54.72 inches raised to 4. And adding this, it would give you an answer of, so 340 plus 54.72. So our answer now would be 394.72. So 394.72 inches raised to 4. So that is to be our answer for this particular problem right here. Okay, so let's just have another example. So in this illustrative problem right here, a certain section has the following properties. So let's say that this certain section right here is to be this section right here. Okay, and its properties would be as follows. So its moment of inertia about the x-axis is equal to 40 cm raised to fourth. Its moment of inertia about the y-axis is equal to 100 cm raised to fourth. And its product of inertia is equal to 40 cm raised to fourth. So these values right here are computed using this um, section right here. So, okay, so we would be determining the maximum moment of inertia, the minimum moment of inertia, and the location of the principal axis. By the way, your principal axis are the axis that would give you the highest and the lowest moment of inertia. So it would be uh, this one right here. So this is to be your principal axis if you, we would be considering this more circle right here. So if that is to be your principal axis, so when you say principal moment of inertia so this would be the moments of inertia that would be your maximum and your minimum and this i mean this can be attained if your product of inertia pxy or your ixy is equal to zero so that is where your principal axis and your principal moment of inertia is located okay so let's just uh, solve for this first part first. So for us to determine the maximum and the minimum moments of inertia about a certain section, given these properties right here, we would now be drawing the Mohr circle. So once again, for the y-axis, or the ordinate, this is to be for pxy or ixy. So main product of inertia, pxy or ixy. So once again, they are basically the same. Okay, and for your abscissa, this is for your inertia, so I. So in here, it is said that our Ix is equal to 40. And our Iy is equal to 100 cm raised to fourth, so raised to fourth. So as you can see here, it may quite be unusual, but our Ix right now is to be less than 100. Okay, so for us to plot it, we would be partnering this with our products of inertia. So 40, and our product of inertia is equal to um, 40 as well. So this is to be uh, 40, 40, 40. And for our IY, which is 100, this is to be negative 40. So this is to be for your ordinate. So for once again, for your IX, that is to be ix and pxy and for your iy this is to be negative pxy but take note guys that this is in reference to this value right here so for example your pxy is equal to negative 40 so this would just be negative and this would be positive so it would be reversed but that isn't to be the case in this problem right here since pxy is equal to positive. Okay, so we would be plotting these two which is, well, in these locations right here. So for this first one right here, 40, 40, so let's say that it would be in this location right here. So 40, and let's say that this is also 40, so it would be this one right here. And for your iy, let's say that this is to be 100. And this is to be negative 40. 
so it would be approximately in this location right here 100 negative 40 so this is to be your 40 40 you would now be um you would now be connecting these both values right here i mean these both points right here so it would be this one right here and as you can see this is to be the center of your more circle so this one right here and from that you would now be drawing a more circle right here and once again since i am not good at drawing your circles especially digitally i would just be making use of this circle right here so there once again we have these values right here 40 40 and 100 negative 40 so i would just be rewriting it here so 40 40 and 100 negative 40 so let's say that this is to be your 40 40 and 100 negative 40 respectively so let's say that it would be this one right here so this is to be for your 100 negative 40 and this one right here is to be your 40 40 okay so from that we can now determine this point right here so it would be up to you if you would be determining this one right here and you would be adding this so this plus this or you can just average their x components which is for i mean 40 and 100 so for this location right here so i would just be making use of this method so 100 plus 40 divided by 2 which is the average of this two right here so 100 plus 40 divided by 2 140 divided by 2 is equal to 70 and to prove it to you so 140 divided by sorry 140 divided by 2 that is equal to 70 so from that this point right here is to be 70 0 okay so so for this value right here that is to be 100 minus 70 and this value right here is to be 70 minus 40 so 70 minus 40 or 100 minus 70 so by that this is to be equal to 30 so 100 minus 70 and 70 minus 30 so 30 okay so since this value right here is to be 30 now let's solve for the radius so for our radius right here so for this triangle right here so i would be drawing another ink here i mean another color so let's say we would be considering this triangle right here so we have 30 at this point right here and in this point right here this is to be negative 40 we can now determine our radius r and for our radius r that is to be via pythagorean theorem that is to be the square root of 30 squared plus negative 40 squared so as you can see here this is to be a right triangle with your radius to be your hypotenuse so from that your r is now equal to so looking at the calculator to your left so square root of 30 squared plus negative 40 squared so our answer here would be 50 so our radius is to be 50 so okay and now what would we solve next so once again our required here is to be the maximum moment of inertia and the minimum moment of inertia so with those we are actually solving for this point right here for the maximum and this point right here for your minimum so min maximum and minimum okay so from that let's solve for this maximum first and since we already know what our radius is which is 50 this point right here up until this point right here is also 50 so that is also 50 right here so for us to determine this certain value right here that is to be so for your this is to be your i max by the way so moment of inertia maximum and looking at the lower part of your screen i max or the moment the maximum moment of inertia is equal to so if this is to be 70 
So if this value right here is to be 70, so 70 plus 50, that is to be your IMAX. So 70 plus 50. So from that, your IMAX is equal to 120 cm raised to 4. So we already have your value for the maximum moment of inertia. And as for your I minimum, this is to be, so as you can see here, this is to be the minimum, which is this one right here. And for your moment of inertia that is minimum, if this is to be 70, I mean, if this point right here is to be 70, and this is, I mean, this part right here is to be your radius, and your radius once again is equal to 50. So 70 minus 50 would be equal to this one right here. So once again, to for you to see it clearly, this whole right here is equal to 70, and this part right here is just 50. So 70 minus 50, that is equal to, so 70 minus 50, so that is equal to 20 cm raised to 4. So this is to be your maximum and your minimum moments respectively. So this is to be for letter A and this is to be for letter B. Okay, so I would just be um, copying this to the next slide. Okay, so for the last part, which is this letter C right here, or the location of the principal axis, so we are to determine the angle from the minimum inertia to the x-axis. And if you can remember, this is to be for your ix. So ix, pxy. And this one right here is to be your ix, I mean iy, pxy. So meaning this point right here is to be for your x-axis and this one right here is to be for your y-axis. So as you can see here, the angle from the minimum inertia to the x-axis. And as you know, the minimum inertia is to be this point right here. So meaning the angle that we are solving for is to be this one right here, which is, let's say, um, alpha, but it is to be 2 alpha. So don't forget about that. And for this number 2 right here, what, that would be the angle from the maximum inertia to the x-axis. And your maximum inertia is to be an, on this point right here. And your x-axis is once again in this point right here. So from that, this value right here is to be, let's say, 2 theta. So that is to be 2 theta. So using trigonometry, we would be solving for these two right here. So for the first one, so considering this triangle right here, so 2 alpha, and once again, our radius is equal to 50. So I don't know why this is not complete. So R is equal to 50. This is to be 50. This is to be, uh, this one right here is to be 40, and this one right here is to be, well, I forgot. So in this case right here, we can use sine to solve for this 2 theta right here. So from that, it is to be, so sine 2 alpha is equal to opposite, which is 40, over hypotenuse, which is 50. So from that itself, we can solve for this alpha right here. So alpha is equal to um, 40 over 50, arc sine so 2 then from here our theta I mean our alpha is now equal to arc sine 40 over 50 divided by 2 so from that our alpha is now equal to so looking at the calculator to your left once again that is to be arc sine 40 divided by 50 so divided by 2, so this is to be 26.565. So 26.565 degrees. So this is to be your angle for the first one, which is the angle from the minimum inertia to the x-axis. So don't forget, guys, that if you are to use your more circle, your angles should always be multiplied by 2. So if this is to be your theta, so in this case right here previously, if this is to be 35 degrees, when you are to plot it in your more circle, this should be 
uh, 70 degrees, so 35 times 2, which is this one right here. So there, your angle right here is to be 26.565. So this is to be for the first one. So I would just be um, putting it here. And now let's solve for the second one, which is the value for our theta, which is the angle from the maximum inertia to the x-axis. So maximum inertia to the x-axis. So it would be this one right here. And how can we solve for this? Basically, this whole angle right here, so from this point up until this point is equal to 180 degrees since this is to be a straight line. So meaning 180 degrees, so 180 degrees is equal to 2 alpha, so 2 alpha plus 2 theta, so 2 theta. And since we already have our value for 2 theta, which is 26.565, 180 degrees is equal to 2 times alpha, which is 26.565 degrees plus 2 theta. So from this, our answer would be, so I wouldn't be transposing it any longer in our solution, but I would be transposing it using our calculators. So 180 minus 2 times 26.565 so equal sign and I would be dividing it by 2. So our answer here is equal to 63.435 degrees. So that is to be our answer here. And this one right here is to be our answer here. So that is how you would be making use of our Mohr circle.